What we're going to be going over here is convertible bonds that are converted into common stock when stock splits have occurred and we're going to be looking at a partial conversion of the bonds here. So for example here Corporation A issued five million dollars worth of bonds here par value at an eight percent interest rate and they're going to be 20 year convertible bonds here at 106 or they were issued here at 106 percent of par and they were issued here on 11x1 when the common stock par value per share here was thirty dollars per share and the market price of a, a common stock here was eighty dollars per share so point one here the conversion option well if you had a thousand dollar bond here you could convert it into five shares of common stock and point two here on one one x two thirty dollar par common stock was split two for one and the conversion rate here of the bonds was adjusted accordingly in point three here and one one x three the common stock had a fifteen dollar per share par value here and it was selling at hundred and thirty five dollars per share and the holders here of twenty percent of the bonds exercised this conversion option and we're looking at this fifteen dollar par value here and that's based on the fact that on one one x two we had that two for one split here so there's twice as many shares outstanding here so that $30 par uh, per share here has to be divided by two and it's reduced down to $15 per share par value here and then point four here we're going to be using the straight line method here for amortizing any premiums or discounts in this case it's going to be a premium and when we do this amortization here we're not going to have to base it on any monthly allocation because we're looking straightly at this problem here as a straight uh, a per year basis here they were issued here in one act one x 11x1 and they're going to convert it here in 11x3 exactly two years later. And the other thing we're not going to be dealing with is any interest uh, costs here on these bonds. We're strictly going to be looking at issuing the bonds here and then converting the bonds and then we'll have to be dealing with only amortization here on that basis. So number one, the first thing we have to do is we have to calculate the pro bond premium that has to be amortized here. So uh, well the amortization here of this bond premium. So the issue price, well we had five million dollar par uh, bonds here that were issued at 106 percent of par so that equates to five million three hundred thousand dollars worth of bonds and then the pond var value here was five million dollars so we have a premium here uh, issue price greater than the par value uh, difference here was a bond premium here of three hundred thousand dollars so our amortization per year here well we had those 20-year bonds the three hundred thousand dollar bond premium so divide that out and you're going to get fifteen thousand dollars amortization here per year so the next thing we have to do is we have to determine the unamortized bond premium here on the bonds that are converted. So we have the premium here. Well, 20% were converted of that th total $300,000 worth of premium. So that gives us $60,000 here of, of premium on the bond since 20% of them were converted. Okay, so now we have to subtract out the, what we've already amortized on this premium for this conversion here. So we have 15,000 per year, two years here that we're amortizing since they were issued here on 11x1 and they converted on 11x3 exactly two years later. We take that times the 20% that were converted here. So that's going to give us uh, amortized amount here of $6,000. So unamortized bond premium, simply the difference here. Premium that we have 20% here of 60,000 less what we've already amortized of 6,000 that gives us an unamortized bond premium here of $54,000. Okay, so we've, we've got that calculated. Next thing we have to look at is the common stock resulting from the conversion. And when we're talking about the conversion, this is after the split here. So our bonds that are convertible here on 11x1, well, we have $5 million par value total amount here divided by $1,000 par here per bond. That's going to give us 5,000 bonds here that are convertible. Number of shares for each bond that we can convert here are five shares. Take that times the number of bonds here and a number of shares here that we can convert before the stock split here are 25,000 shares. Now the stock split comes around, along here on 11x2 and we have to adjust our conversion here for the number that of our bond, of our shares here. So we have number of shares here before the split 25,000 times the split here where we 
two extra sh or two shares here you split two for one take that times two here to 25,000 that gives us the number of shares convertible after the split here at 50,000 shares now 20% of the bonds were converted so that means 20% of those uh, shares here could be converted so 20% of 50,000 here gives us the number of common stock shares that we would actually issue on this conversion here of 10,000 shares here now the par value per share well we were sitting at $30 here before the split so we have twice as many shares outstanding like we said before with that would reduce our par here from 30 down to $15 per share so our par value per share at $15 here times the number of shares that would be issued on this conversion of 10,000 gives us our total par value your common stock issued here on 11x3 at $150,000 okay so now let's go and let's look at how we would record this conversion here and again we're not going to be involving any interest charges or anything like that we're strictly going to look at these this here so we're going to record the issue here of the five million dollar par value bonds here at 106 percent and we're also going to record this conversion here 20 percent of the outstanding bonds after the two for one stock split okay so what when we make this conversion here everything is going to be based on the book value not the market value i gave you the market value in the for the problem here but when we're doing these conversions it's based on the book value okay so this is what's going to go on here we're going to convert our bonds here into common stock so we're going to have our bonds here in a bonds payable and as a as a on our balance sheet here and that's really a liability account here and we're going to convert them into equity here in common stock but first off let's look at the issue here of these bonds so what we're going to it's going to involve we're going to increase our cash here by the um, that the uh, issue price here we had that five million dollars worth of bonds here at 106 percent so at our bond issue here we're going to have received our cash here of five million three hundred thousand dollars so debit your cash here for five million three hundred thousand dollars that's at the issue here one one x one now our bonds payable we have since we issued them here we're going to have to set up a payable here and that's based on the um, five million dollar par value on those bonds so we'd credit our bonds payable here for five million dollars then we had that premium on our bonds payable remember we calculated that to be three hundred thousand dollars so we credit our premium here by three hundred thousand so our credits here are five million plus three hundred thousand balance with our debit here cash we received here five million three hundred thousand now we have to deal with this conversion here this is and it's really simple numbers here but let's look at how we'd uh, handle that so 20% here of the $5 million worth of bonds were converted. So that equates to $1 million here. So 20% here of $5 million gives us, uh, we reduce our bonds payable by $1 million. So debit, reduce our bonds payable by $1 million. Now for that premium here, we calculated that already here. That uh, Well, what we would do here, that is going to, equal that $54,000 that we count the unamortized premium here that's unamortized we have to remove that off the books here we removing 20% of the bonds here at their par value and then we take that $54,000 unamortized premium here and we remove it off the books we had 300,000 here credit we remove 54,000 here so we would have debited here for our bonds payable at a million we would debit here our premium here $54,000 so what we have here we got to come up with some balancing entries here so uh, for our our common stock that's what we're issuing it here and that's at that $15 par value after the split here so we had $10,000 uh, 10,000 shares here issued $15 par value per share here after the split and we calculated that to be $150,000 so our common stock par amount here uh, credit that here for $150,000 just so you note here we originally before the split we had a $30 par value per share now we've come down with the split here we have to reduce that per share par value down to fifteen dollars okay so we've got our common stock par amount here we know what we've taken off the books here for that 20 percent conversion so additional paid in capital for common stock that really becomes the balancing entry here and we're going to credit that here for nine hundred and four thousand dollars so how we come up with that here real simple arithmetic here bonds um, book value or carrying value here was one million plus the fifty four thousand we're taking off here one million fifty 
1,054,000 here. Common stock par here of 150,000. So the differences goes into additional paid in capital here of 904,000. So that becomes a balancing entry, this additional paid in capital here for common stock. So we've got our debits here of 1,054,000. And then if we add up our credits here, 150,000 plus uh, the what our balancing amount here, 904,000, that's going to add up to the bonds book value or carrying value that was converted here. Okay, so we've taken care of that here. Just remember when you're doing, and what I've showed here, I didn't show any interest charges here, any interest costs on these bonds. All I'm showing is what we when we make our issue here, and then when we made that 20% here, the bonds that were converted. Just remember here, it's done at the book value, not the market value. We do whatever the book value is, and in this case for a common stock, we had to adjust that a uh, par value of our common stock shares down here since the split, and we also had to adjust for the number of shares here uh, of common stock that would be. Uh, would be, would be exchanged here based on that uh, split here when we increase the number of uh, uh, with the split here when we increase the number of shares that were outstanding with those split so we have to adjust for our par value here and when we also had to adjust for the number of shares here that after the split so that takes care of our entries here just remember here we were changing uh, exchanging here our bond which is uh, a liability here and we were exchanging those for common stock or increasing our equity here in the company in our common stock account. And the additional paid in capital account here, that was really a balancing entry between whatever we took off the books here in our bonds payable and our premium to bonds payable and the amount here that we had in our par value here for our common stock. So that takes care of our uh, convertible bonds here that are converted into common stock when you have the stock split and also a partial conversion conversion here we had only 20 percent of the bonds that were actually converted into common stock all right that takes care of our example here